There you go. So you can see the, my nice little Nissan wheel over here. <laughs> okay. I'm actually connected here to the car because uh, I don't have any battery left pretty much. The, the, no headphones, sorry. We're, 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 we're very cheap over here. We got no headphones. We're going to try to talk a little bit softer so it doesn't bother you people. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm going to try to walk outside. You know, it just occurred. Huge drainage canal over here that goes right into the area where the shootings was. I mean, anybody, they, they don't even have to jump into a car. They could just jump in this drainage canal right here, take it all the way to Lord knows where, to Mexico pretty much, and they're in the clear. All right, I got, I got out of the car so you can see the area pretty much. We're far away now. We're a little bit farther now from the area. Uh, it's on Waterman Boulevard. There's the freeway. The freeway comes here and Waterman crosses right off of the freeway. So. Where the shootings were, it's north on Waterman. I also wanted to say something that's really important. The police officer told me the shootings were at an elderly person's home. I repeat. Guys, let me know how, how true, how much truth there is in, in that. Uh, if the shootings were in an elderly uh, person's home, it, it, that's what I actually heard from the police officers that stopped me. And uh, they told me that. And once again, I have to say, I have to tip my hat off to the police officers. I think they're doing a wonderful job. They're, they're, I mean, imagine what they have to deal with right now. There's an active shooter. They don't know what's going on. They don't know where he's at. They see a guy like me running around a little bit overexcited. Leg over here is looking wonderful, bleeding, you know, because I got excited when I got out of, the, out of my car. Because I want to get the first pair. I think this might just be the first periscope of a, of a live event. Here, I want to show you guys. Stop it going by. A little bit far away so I don't know if you can see it there's like a total I would say of uh, there's like three or four helicopters there's I hear another one coming from the west so I'm a little bit farther away I'm pretty much charging my battery so I can go back to that area so you guys can see what's going on once again uh, there's been a shooting in San in San Bernardino uh, the shooters are still at large we don't know exactly what is going on. Um, the best way to find out is the people that are watching us. Uh, oh, okay, my bad. I had no, I had no idea. Hey, good point, man. Good point. Yeah, all, all active shoot events have Periscope. Hey, man. Thanks for letting me know because I had no idea. So I'm not the first one. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm happy that that Periscope showed what happened in the Paris attacks because uh, it's a great way to, to show what's happening firsthand and it puts you like at the scene of what's going on pretty much so I'm just charging much waiting uh, for my phone to charge a little bit that's the only bad thing about it uh, here we go helicopter flying overhead I don't know if you guys can see it if I can turn it around yeah turn it here we go upside down yeah Thank you everybody for uh, for the kind words. I do appreciate it. First time I do something like this. Um, I don't know about how. You uh, I'm from Puerto Rico. That's 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 where the accent is coming from. My family's Cuban. Uh, we've been brought up. Imagine my family's Cuban from Havana, brought up in a place where we have uh, no democracy. So when you come to a country like this, you know. Democracy is a big thing. You know, you can be a little bit jaded about everything that's happening. Here's the chopper going around one more time. Let's see if I can get it up. And the reason I say all this is because coming from a, a Cuban family, like, I come out here and I hear what happens and I can't be calm because it just really angers me how people, you know, take take for granted the liberty that we have. And, and once again, I, I'm just, I guess I'm going overboard. I'm thinking that, you know, that did it, but maybe it was just a disgruntled, uh, person that came in and you don't know but once again from what i understand there's more than one shooter so if you guys know anything let me know if there if there's uh any other shooters uh all the facts that you're hearing on twitter if there's more than one shooter if there is one shooter if he's still at large if he still hasn't still is not at large i can just tell you what i'm seeing and hearing right now there's two helicopters that keep going over the same area over and over i imagine the bodies uh i don't know if they're still there where, where they were shot or they're taken away but there was a huge line of ambulances, as you as you as you guys could see. Uh, everything around here, there, there there's a huge traffic, as you can clearly see over there on the on the freeway. Uh, but it's kind of funny because nobody's getting off the freeway to see what's happening. Uh, obviously, people just want to stay away. Uh, 
the police have uh, Waterman, which is the uh, the street where it happened. They had they have it blocked off. Uh, there's two police officers on the corner of Waterman and uh, I think it's uh, Enterprise or whatever. It's one of the main streets on, towards the front uh, with machine guns. And then a little bit farther back, there's another uh, group of cops with machine guns. So it's it's a very difficult situation. Sí, de Puerto Rico siempre. Eh, mira, eh, bilingüe también para los que no hablen eh, inglés. Eh, ha habido un shooting aquí de, de sabe Dios quién rayo fue esta gente. El cubano te lo trae en directo para que sepan lo que está pasando. Estoy un poquito lejos del lugar. Unos policías me pararon. Eh, querían chequear lo que estaba pasando. Y eso es una buena cosa. Yo soy de Guaynabo, <ríe> Guaynabo City. 100%, 100% de corazón. Los amo mucho. Y este. Nada, aquí filmando. The, yeah. <laughs> I'll speak English all right then. No, this dude wanted to see uh, what, if I was Latino. Yeah, I'm from Puerto Rico. So, um. Un chute. No, no es un shooting donde la gente se mete en heroína por allá abajo. Si eres de Puerto Rico, tú entiendes lo que te estoy diciendo. No. Un, una balacera. Perdónenme. Este, en Puerto Rico lo que se habla es Spanglish. Entonces, básicamente, sí, mano. I, I'm trying to be careful out here, but I'll be honest with you. The police force ha, are doing a wonderful job. They're checking everybody out. They have their guns drawn and uh, all sorts of uh, police forces are out here. They have uh, undercovers, they have feds. Every, everybody you can imagine they're doing, I mean, you know, this is a very, very serious thing. And we can't just take it like, a, like, like you know, like whatever. So every time I'm walking around, like everybody looks at you and everything. And you know, you gotta be careful, you gotta be careful. But the first thing I know is, it's just, it's just a difficult situation. It's a, it's a little bit calmer right now. Um, the area I'm looking right now, the area where the police are with the long guns, they're kind of far away. I, I know you can't see them from here, but they're still there. They, they have every, everything, uh, they have everything basically. <laughs> Thank you so very much from that person from CBS TV. I've been trying to get a job as a journalist for a very long time and I understand. It's easier to become the next Brad Pitt than become a journalist because it's so in demand and it's so such a wonderful job. I'm the type of person, I'll be honest with you, I spend all day watching Wolf Blitzer and CNN and I'm a total dork when it comes to that type of thing. Like when it comes to Wolf Blitzer, when it comes to... Anyway, I'm not going to get into it. You know, I, I, I watch everything, but I think CNN has really, really, really good... Uh, how they how they uh, portray everything that's happening and they're always uh very fact based. So I'm a dork when it comes to news. That's why I'm out here, guys. I'm, I I want to get the news. I want to show you what the, the 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 potential of Periscope and what is the potential of Periscope that no other thing out there can do. I can put you first person and have you in the area of the shooting and experiencing it like if you were here right now with a journalist. A little while ago, there's another Periscope that's up, which is the one I did a little while ago. I just went up to one of the, the uh, journalists that was interviewing some, somebody. I'm going to do that in a little while. And uh, I just picked up their feed and to see, uh, I don't know how kosher that is, but then again, I'm just trying to get you guys the best news that I possibly can, a uh, fact-based. And uh, so you get a feeling of what's going on, not just, hey, this happened here, this happened over here, but a feeling of, of literally, you walk down the street and, you know, cops will come up to you with their eyes super huge. Everybody's... Uh, very concerned everybody's scared everybody's very scared and we're trying to be calm and we're trying to do the best we can but america's changed that's 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 all i can say right now america's changed oh big shout out to spain Inigo. Vaya, vaya, Inigo. Un abrazo grande para mi gente. you know what people keep telling me be safe i'm gonna be really honest with you if i meet one of those i mean it's, it's just too much what I've seen on the news recently in Paris. Not only in Paris, what ISIS is doing across the world is an abomination. I mean, I don't have to tell you how horrible it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's just beyond everything. It's just, it's just beyond everything. And the last thing I want to do is be safe because I, 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 I want to go to where ISIS is and I want to just hurt them. I just want to hurt them so bad like everybody else. So I'm doing my little bit right now. I'm sure this has nothing to do with ISIS. I'm not saying it has anything to do with it, but this is a very tense situation that we're in. And you know, like you can be walking down the street one day and something really bad happens. You gotta be prepared, you know? Like in, in Paris, I mean, I'm not with Donald Trump or, or, or any of those people, but sometimes I think the best thing is being armed, you know? Like 
when that happened in Paris, if I see somebody doing that to somebody else, you know, I know a lot of Americans that think that way, you know, like we have to do something. Why do you think th the president of the United States, after saying the war in Iraq is over, he's sending no more troops in Iraq just the, a few days ago, once again on CNN, I saw it. Troops are being sent to Iraq and it's special forces. So there's nowhere for ISIS to hide. There's nowhere for them to go. The hardest of the hard and the, the, the people that I swear to God, these special forces, Americans, if I, I just hug them with all my heart because I love them. Forgive me for being so passionate, but they're the only ones that give a damn. And they go out there and, 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 and they put their lives at risk for, for this thing that we call democracy and being able just to film this right now and say whatever I want to say in a way that's rational, you know, and it's, it's just very difficult times we're living in, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, this is more than, a, than an objective point of view. This is just a spiel coming from me right now, you know. This is too close for home and I mean, it's like all the, the, the reporters say on TV, like, you, ha, ha, it's very difficult to catch a terrorist that wakes up in the morning, grabs a gun, goes out and shoots a, a bunch of people. It's, it's a totally different type of warfare than what Al-Qaeda used to do, like huge bombing of a huge building and bringing it down. This is asymmetrical, I guess. Warfare that, as all the professionals say, it's very difficult to stop. So... What are we supposed to do as a civilization, as a humanity? It's just, ah, no more Al-Qaeda. Thank you, Daesh, Daesh. That's what we have to call them. They hate that name. No more ISIL, no more ISIS, no more ECEC or whatever the hell. Daesh, they hate that name. Don't ask me why. I just know they hate that name. Let's call them that from now on. <sighs> just so angry, you know. Thank you, somebody, for, 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 for saying thank you for the passion. It's just, dude, it's just it, enough is enough, man, you know, like. Anyway, I hope everybody's safe. Everybody keep your clo uh, loved ones close, you know. Difficult times we're living in, you know. And the reason I'm saying all this, it's so easy for one of these bastards to just pick up a gun in the morning. They're just unhappy with life and just go out and shoot people. And as the professionals and all the people that I see on CNN, the, the, the ones that are the commentators, uh... Bob Bear, <laughs> the CIA guy that I always watch and I love that guy. He's one of the ones that he's a CIA, ex CIA operative. And he always just says the same thing. It's so difficult to be able to, 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 to catch those people. Like we are living in times that are so difficult. So I don't have a gun, man, but, but I'm the, I mean, should I buy a gun to protect myself? Because you just don't know what's going to happen. The future is changing. I mean, I'm starting to think, you know, like, I mean, ISIS is planning, you know, is everything that I thought was bull, you know, like, come on, they're going to come through Mexico, give me a break. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, shit, man, why wouldn't they do it? Sooner or later, they're going to do it. They want to come and they want to attack us in that ace. And, they, and I'm telling you, they have people here and we have to, we have to be vigilant and we have to be passionate in the point of view. We can't be like, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. If we see something wrong, report it. Listen, you hear the sirens? Sirens, guys. It's been like this all day. Sirens back and forth. Hey, guys. Thanks, everybody, for all the uh, for all the comments. Even the haters, everybody that gives your point of view. You know what? That's American, where you can just troll somebody as much as you want without getting decapitated. That's American, okay? You go to try to do that in Saudi Arabia. You say so, not even ISIS or ISIL. You go to Saudi Arabia, you, you, you say something again. You're a woman and you drive, you might get lashed 20 times. You do something that's a little bit worse, you get decapitated in Saudi Arabia, one of our greatest allies. Why? Because they got all the oil money. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it. The point is, these are very difficult times. And you know what? That's not enough American flags that you put up. You need to put up 20. 30 American flags. Is there any way to get a backdrop of just American flags falling from the sky for the love of Christ? I love America. I love it. And all you people that are defending America, and I know you people are, go, are, are prepping now the special forces that are going all the way over there. I have you in my heart. I, I, I know I'm just, <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Everybody, everybody do this. Put all the flags up. Fill it up with flags. Fill it up with flags. Show them. 
Remember a time we were like, ah, we're America. America's boring. Oh, I'm American. Remember a few years ago, we were, we were like, ah, America, whatever. Nah. Now we're going to be the ones that say, America, man, we are so damn proud of being American. So damn proud. Forget about the right and the left dividing us. No, no, no. We have to. Oh, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I'm going to take it. I'm sorry. I'm taking a picture of this right now. And any other flags you guys want to put? American flags all the way. All the way. Do you love America? Do you love America? And I'm from Puerto Rico. It's a colony. People in Puerto Rico have issues with America because of the colony and, and you own us, you don't. No, no, forget about that. I'm going to tell you a little story really quickly. Please bear with me. Puerto Rico, the criminals, we have ATF, we have FBI, and then we have three different Puerto Rican forces. So anytime a criminal jacks or uh, robs a car, it's a federal offense. We have American money. We have uh, U.S. Post Service. So I'm going to say thank you, United States, for being in Puerto Rico. People can criticize, they can say whatever, but at the end of the day, people's bellies are full because the United States is in Puerto Rico. So thank you. And thanks, everybody, for putting up the American <clears throat> the American flags, Swedish flags. And <laughs> he has lost it. Thank you. I have lost it. I kind of lost it like I would say like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So it's, it's not a new thing. But um, yeah, man. Mexico. Big shout outs. Yeah, American flags, please. As many. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, definitely. I lost the plot for sure. But thank you for, for giving your opinion. I do appreciate it. Anything you want to say. I'm, I'm just kind of waiting for my phone to charge a little bit. Uh, now you can see me really close. Um, here. Let me, let me. Uh, which mall would that be? The uh, San Bernardino Mall? The San Bernardino Mall is on the west side. Uh, this happened uh, kind of like in the center of San Bernardino, south south center, something like that. I don't, I don't even know how you say it. Uh, but basically, there's been a... Sh no, it's not at the mall. It's not at the mall. It's the shooting, and I quote what the police officers said, the sheriffs. The shooting has been an, at an old person's home. Old person's home. Put up American flags. I, 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 hey, guys, it seems like you guys don't love America. I just see a few American flags. We need a lot of American flags up. Show these people how much you love America. Speak your mind. Show them you love America. This is the time. You know what? The only thing ISIS is doing is uniting us. They're just uniting us at the end of the day. And, and through all the pain that we're going through and all the hardship that, that we're going through. I don't know if you guys saw the news this morning. ISIS decapitates a Russian spy. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you got to be pretty out there. I mean, it's one thing to go up against America, but now you're going to go up against Putin also. I mean, you want to go up against everything. That's very politically savvy, I must say. I mean, I know you. I, I know ISIS wants to just, just thank you guys for the American flags. Hey, thank you, Chief Von Fan Six One Five. Not scared. We're not scared. We are not scared. Yeah, the police. Uh, the police are secure. Hey. If you know that cop, give him a hug. Because he's doing a really good... Putin, man. Putin, let me tell you something about Putin. Putin, I'm not even going to talk about Putin because he scares the living Christ out of me, okay? So, I'm not even going to get into Putin, all right? Uh, but all I know is that ISIS decapitated a Russian spy today. I, they're doing everything they possibly can to be exterminated, exterminated off the face of the earth as quickly as humanly possible. And I know their whole philosophy is probably all... Oh, will become the martyrs and other people will come. Well, let me tell you something else about ISIS and keep putting up those American flags. Keep putting them up. ISIS, the people that have moved to ISIS and are living in the caliphates, I think it's in Rot... Ambulance... L listen, listen, police cars. You hear it? There is now an, in uh, an increased activity of police sirens going all over the place. Uh-oh, uh-oh, guys. There he goes. There he goes. See him? You didn't see him. I'm sorry. There is now an... Oh, there's a total of one, two. You see it? You, three, four, five police cruisers, six police cruisers going in one direction, going east of Waterman on, uh, I think it's business or it's where all the businesses are, like towards the Xerox. Uh, I'm not saying anything happened at Xerox, but they're moving in that direction. So what is the point? It's still an active... Oh, shoot, I mean, if you... 
you know what? Thank you for comparing me to CNN. That is an honor. Just putting me in the same sentence as CNN is an honor, okay? I kiss your feet, Wolf Blitzer. Okay, that's all I gotta say about that. And everybody at CNN, CNN is amazing. Okay, so I just had to say really sorry for, for, for being all over the place. Let's see it really quickly. There has been an increased police movement of police cruisers. I would say less than one or two minutes ago, uh, where I'm at, six police cruisers were moving in one direction. When I first got here, I would say an hour and a half ago, for the first half hour, there was no movement, more sirens, and they're far away now. Now they're, now they're not in San... I hear, those sirens that I hear are not in San Bernardino, that's Redlands. Anybody that knows where we're at, I can't. Hey guys, I would love to, but everything is blocked off. This is a city that's literally, you, you, you can't really move around that easily. But just so you get an idea of what the scene is like, kind of it kind of quieted down a little bit right now. But where I'm standing, I'm on the corner. Oh my goodness, I wish I knew where the freeway. I'm I'm at the corner where the freeway is. I think it's the the 10. I'm not even sure. And where it gets off at Waterman, a little bit towards uh, where the stores are, right by uh, Chili's and. Uh, I don't know if it's Coco's or CC's. Forgive me, I don't, I don't know the areas. I just want to give you American flags, as many as we can see. Thank you. And I'm saying it because where I'm standing behind me, far away, less than two minutes ago, I heard a bunch of sirens. In front of me, I just saw six cop cars less than a minute and a half ago going that way, going east. What is my point? This is a city. I don't want to say it's under siege, but th it, this is still going on. And not only that, it's getting worse as we speak. Hey guys, oh, Jay, you got it, man. That's my dude right there. American flags and French flags, awesome, I love it. Yeah, it, well dude, you know what the problem with the crime scene is? It's the whole city. See, it's it's a, no, the, 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 where the crime scene is, there's no more, there's no more cops. It's in the areas, are, thank you for saying that, by the way. It's in the areas that, that that are not the crime scene. I hear ambulances in the back. I saw six cop cars going east. And when those police officers in the other uh, feed that you guys are seeing uh, that I did uh, previously, the two police officers that stopped me, one of them said to me, and I heard it on his, on his, on his, uh, the thing that's on his right here, uh, the, the feed or, oh my God, I can't even speak right. Well, the dispatcher pretty much said, active shooter here at this place. I don't know what the place was, but those guys listened to it, and then they didn't go anywhere, but but somebody said, active shooter, this place. Yeah, put up all the flags. You know what? Put up the American flag, put up the French flag, put up the British flag, put up the Spanish flag. Don't forget the terrorist. Uh, put up the shit flag, too. <laughs> Dude, hey, speak your mind. We can do that here in America. That's why I love it. Speak your mind. I, I, I spoke to the officer. I, I did tell him how I felt. Like, But you have to understand, this is a special situation of an officer stops you. And what has happened, has happened, you know, you, you have to follow. It's, it's a very de delicate situation. And I'm with the police 100%. They're doing a very good job. A very, very good job. And we should support them. And if they stop you and they want to talk to you, you stop and you talk to them because what they're trying to do is secure a situation and they're still looking for somebody. I mean, I have to give you the facts. We're in San Bernardino. The Mexican border is less than two hours away. I get, you know, a person can literally get in a car, drive to the border, drive into Mexico. I don't know if you guys have seen what it's like driving into Mexico. It's you just whoop, right in there, there. There's no, I don't think there's a guard. I mean, if anybody knows, let me know it's wrong. Oh, thank you. The guy with all the flags. I love it. Um, you could just go into Mexico. So this is the type of situation where you can come here, shoot up a bunch of people, and you can just disappear to Mexico. And it's going to be really hard to catch you. I mean, just the cartels will probably get you down there and cut you into That's probably why ISIS doesn't even dare come through Mexico because of the damn cartels. I might be exaggerating a little bit. And that was kind of like a joke. But, you know, like, it's just such a difficult situation. We have 
for the first time in my life, I keep thinking the border is open to ISIS. I, I, it's kind of like me two, or, two or three years ago when, uh, when the leader of uh, Syria was like terrorists are attacking our country. I'm like, what the hell is this crazy bastard talking about? He's just attacking his own people, Assad, and those terrorists just happen to be ISIS. Those terrorists just happen to be ISIS, and everything he said was true. So two years just changes everything. Yeah, man. I mean. I have a girlfriend that she was like, hey, let's go see our family in Durango, in Mexico. Her see her mom in Durango. I'm like, I, I don't think so. Sorry. I love you. I mean, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I'll be the first one that gets sick. Like, trao. Come on. A hey, big shout out to, to the people in Mexico, by the way. Much love to all you people. Scare the shit out of me, but much love to you. Um, But basically, it's a very... Uh, yeah, crazy. There's a lot of crazy Americans, but, you know. Things are changing. It's, it's, it's a situation now where, where the terrorists want to come to this country and they want to attack us. And I don't see it as being something that's that difficult for them to do. And what solution is there? We have to arm ourselves to the teeth. And, you know, any, any weird things goes, goes down is going to be a shootout. But it's just, it's just the world that, that we're living in now. Okay, yeah, guys, please, please relay the facts because I don't know what the heck is going on. Three people have died. Okay, okay, okay. Those are not the ones that died. It's three people. Okay. Well, see, this is what I'm saying. I said this at the beginning of, of my transmission. I went to a gentleman that was interviewed uh, by CBS, local CBS. And I just happened to speak with him before I was periscoping. And he was the one that told me three Middle Eastern young men got out of a car. They shot up that place. They got back into the car and they sped away. And the thing that that's concerning to me is that basically um there's still a lot of sirens going around in this area you know so you know if, if there's still a shooter at large at, at this juncture it's something that should definitely worry us because <clears throat> usually when it comes to these things they, they 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 get the shooter super quickly now it's a little bit quieter hey that's a really good point chasing hc chasing one channel said 12 dead another said three dead we have no idea um i'm gonna get off now i think i might have uh, charged a little bit i'm gonna try to go back into the area i'll be back with you guys in a little while hey thanks everybody for coming out uh i really do appreciate